What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to add materials to our model in Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so up to this point, we've created our model, but we haven't really done anything with materials. And so I wanted to talk about a few of the different ways that we can go through and add materials and change the visibility of our model. Now, the first thing you need to understand in Rhino is some of the different ways that you can basically show different things like colors and materials. And they're all going to be driven by the properties of the viewport style that you have in here. So for example, if you have wireframe selected, there's going to be no materials at all because it's not actually showing solid faces, right? If you don't show faces, you can't really show materials. However, if you were to go into like rendered view, that's going to show you any materials that you have in your model, which as of right now, we have none. And then you've got ones like your shaded view, which aren't really going to show any materials unless you set them up to do that. And so there's a few different visibility properties that are applied to objects inside of Rhino. And side note, I do have a more detailed video on materials, which I will link to in the notes down below. But um, when we're looking at objects in Rhino, one of the things you might've noted is that there are different layers inside of Rhino. right? So objects can go on different layers. So for example, this is my roof object. Well, let's say I wanted a layer. I wanted to call it roof right here. I could take this object, click on the little drop down at the bottom of the page and put this on the roof layer. Now, what that means is that means that this object has basically been tagged as being on this particular layer right here. And notice how I can adjust things about it, right? So I could put my exterior walls on a different layer. So let's just say we wanted to call this walls underscore exterior right here, we could take this object and put it on the wall's exterior layer. Notice how, again, I can toggle that on and off right here. Now, notice something about this. When I did this, notice how the lines inside of the model change color. The reason why the lines in the model change color is because you can see that there's a little box right here for um, your color of things that are on the layer and specifically the color is going to affect the color of the lines and edges of objects that are on this layer. So notice how right now inside of this viewport, this is showing me the line color and the material color that are set by layer. Well, let's say that we were to add a material right here and we're just going to add a color. So I'm just going to click on the drop down right here and we're just going to pick custom and we'll just set this color to maybe a red. So kind of like a light red right here. We're gonna click on okay. Well, notice how now the walls that are on this wall's exterior layer are red. If I was to change the color of the roof, so say that we wanted a new material. So we'll click on the drop down, click right here, add a custom material. And in this case, we'll say that the roof is going to be gold and click on okay. Inside of this view type, this is showing me the material that's been applied to the layer as the object material. Now, if we were to click the drop down and go to something else like rendered view, it's currently going to show us the same thing. But if you were to go to something like ghosted, it's going to look a little different. If you go to technical, it's going to look different. Monochrome um, is exactly what it sounds like. It's not actually going to show any of those materials, but um, all that to say, a lot of these views are set up by default to show the layer material as the material in the viewport. Okay, and so as of right now, the layer that these objects are on is driving what's displayed in your viewport, right? It's basically applying this custom material to everything on that layer. Now, we don't necessarily want that. And so what we can do is we can override that by selecting our object and going into your object properties. So. If you click on the second option in here for properties and specifically what you want is you want the second option, which is material. Notice how this object right now is set to use the layer material, meaning that whatever layer this is on is what's being displayed in the viewport. However, you can click on this drop down right here and you can use this button in order to add a new material to this object. You can also use it to select other materials that are already in the in the model, 
right here, but we wanna add a new one. And so there are options in here to do things like plasters and metals that are a little bit more procedural. I'm gonna kind of skip past that a little bit and I wanna go straight into applying a material to your object. So if I click on the button right here for import from material library, what that should do is that should pop up a window that shows all of the materials contained inside of um, your Rhino library. This library of materials should be installed when you install Rhino on your computer. And so what we wanna do is we wanna scroll down and let's say we wanted to apply a plaster material to this object. Well, notice how when I double click on this, this is gonna show me previews of a bunch of the different plasters that are contained inside of our library. And in this case, we're just gonna add a gray plaster. So notice how now, even though this is on a layer that has a custom red material on it, because this object has a material applied to it specifically, that's overriding what's shown in our viewport. So we can use this and we can do it for multiple different objects if we want. So notice how I'm gonna do a shift click right here. I'm gonna select all of my glass objects right here. And it's probably a good idea while you have them selected to go ahead and create a layer for glass. So I'm just going to call this glass you can put these objects on that layer. But what I wanna do in this situation with all of these objects selected, and notice I have multiple objects selected. I can click the drop down right here, click the plus button, and I wanna add a glass material. Well, notice how that applied a glass material to every single object that we have selected in here. So every one of these now has glass, associated with it. And what I can do is I can actually edit and adjust that glass material. So if I click in here and I wanna select the object first, but let's pick up our glass right here, is we can adjust this glass material. And one thing to note about this is notice how if I adjust one of these, they're all going to adjust. So say I wanted these to have more of a blue tint in here like this. So notice how I'm able to do that just by adjusting the color of my object. Notice how every one of those, because they're all referencing the same glass material, um, are all going to change at once. So that can be a huge time saver. Um, if you do reuse the same material over and over again, you can just edit it once if you've applied it to multiple objects. So now let's say we wanted to add a roof material. So I wanna add a shingle material to my roof. So what I would do is I would click on this object and then we're gonna click on the drop down, and we're going to add a roof texture from our material library. So we're gonna come in here under architectural roof shingle and we're just gonna pick a shingle. And by the way, if your view looks like this, you can right click go to view large icons and you should get previews of the materials in your window. But let's say we were to apply this gray shingle material in here. Well, that's applied it to our surface. We're gonna click on okay, like this, but we have a problem. And the problem is this has applied this shingle material to every single surface in this object, which we don't want because you don't actually build roofs this way. Right, So you don't build a roof with shingles on the side like this. Usually, there are some styles where you would do something like that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo this and I wanna show you how to apply a material to a singular object. So remember that we can do a control shift and mouse over something in order to pick up a sub part. Well, in this case, I'm gonna do a control shift and I'm going to add my roofing or my gray shingle material to just this object right here. So notice how I was able to add my, my shingle material to this roof, um, but only to the one object that I had selected. So individual sub objects can have materials applied to them as well. So in this case, say that I wanted to add a color or a metal panel or something to this object. Well, what I could do is I could come in here and I could select these four objects. And in this case, we're not gonna do anything fancy. We're just going to maybe pick We'll just pick an eggshell chocolate, 
material. So just assuming we're going to apply some sort of material like this to this surface. And so notice how I'm able to apply multiple different materials in here like this. Okay, so now let's edit the size of this material. So to do that, there's an option over here for textures. And so textures is going to allow you to manage the textures that are inside of your model. So basically we're managing the images that are in here. Well, I'm gonna do a control shift click. I'm going to pick this gray shingle material in here. Notice how if I scroll down, there's an option for size. You can adjust the size of the material that's applied to this surface. And what you wanna do is you wanna adjust the size until this is pretty close um, to the size that you would actually want them to be in the real world. And you can do things like adjusting the rotation of the materials if you want to. In this case, they were mapped out pretty well at the zero degrees, so we're gonna leave it like this. And then let's say that we wanted to add a wood material here. So, and th this object is kind of continuing along the inside of my model. I'm just going to apply a wood to everything um, just for simplicity's sake, but you might want to split this out so that this exterior face is separate from the face over here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here, I'm going to click the drop down, add a material, and we're going to import from material library, and this time we're going to pick a wood. And so we're going to do a view, large icons, and what we're looking for specifically is something kind of linear, um, so that looks like kind of a linear wood material. And I'm actually not liking any of my options here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to go download a material and bring it in from an exterior location. So there's a lot of websites that are good for this. One that I use a lot is called textures.1. And I think they actually changed the name to 3D Assets.1. Um, but basically this is a collection, um, it's actually a website that searches a bunch of different other websites for materials. And so what we can do is we can look for linear wood. And it maybe doesn't like that, so maybe we'll just type in wood. But notice how you can see all of these different wood materials from all of these different websites. So I'm gonna scroll through until I find a material that I like for these soffits. And a lot of the time you end up using like a wood floor, but we'll click on this one and it's gonna take you to a website called ambientcg.com and you can download the material maps for this, um, for this wood texture. Now, um, note that there are multiple different maps in here that do different things. I'm not going to talk about PBR maps in this video, but those are going to be image files that contain information about how an object is going to interact with light. In this case, we're just going to bring down one of these zip files and um, note that depending on the resolution of the file, the file size can be bigger or smaller. Usually, unless I'm doing high resolution renderings, I don't like to do anything more than 2K. So I'm just gonna bring this 2K down. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna download a folder and what that's gonna do is that's gonna download a zip file which we can extract. And that's gonna contain a number of different maps. And in this case, I'm gonna do a view, there we go. So in this case, the one I'm worried about is the color map. We can talk about the other maps in a future video, but what I wanna do is I want to click on this button right here. Notice how there's an option for create physically based material from texture files. What that means, is that means that I can go find those material files that I just downloaded. And in this case, I'm gonna pick the color map. You can click on open. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a material in Rhino based on that image. And in this case, we're gonna tell it that we want this to be the base color map. And you can set this to be a real world size if you want. Um, so you could say texture size is gonna be three foot three by three foot three. And one of the things I find helpful is just kind of looking at how long these planks might be. You know, whether they're like four feet or six feet or whatever, I can see that like one of these planks is probably going to be about four feet. So I could bump this up to four foot three or something like that. Um, and so what that did is that created a material, which you can see right here, that created a material based on that image file 
that we had selected. And so you can definitely go into the texture options. You can pick this and you can set the rotation by 90 degrees, that's going to change the direction um, that that material is going. Now notice how we're having something happening on the inside of our model. So that is what's known as Z fighting. Z fighting is basically when multiple objects occupy the same space inside of a 3D modeling engine. It doesn't know which one to display, so you get this flashing. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to toggle off my roof layer real quick. I'm gonna see if I can pick up this surface and just delete it out of here because I don't really need it anymore. Um, so now I've got my wood material kind of continuing through like this. And so this is how you would apply materials to your whole model. So in this situation, you could go through and you could pick out all of these mullions, right? And one of the things that might be helpful is toggle off your exterior walls toggle off your roof, toggle off your glass. And so um, one thing I would have to do is just set my current layer to default. Now I can toggle the glass off. So what I could do is I could come in here and I could just select all of these objects like this. And you could put them on a layer if you wanted to. So that might make this faster in the future. So we're just gonna call this aluminum. Make sure those are all on that layer. But those objects, I'm going to apply an aluminum material. And we might even do the same thing with this door frame. So I'm gonna put the door frame on the aluminum layer as well. But I'm just gonna go through and I'm going to add a material. So we're gonna click on this button right here and we'll pick a metal material. Um, so just something kind of metallic. We're gonna bring the roughness of that metal down like this. And one thing you can do is you can hop over into rendered mode to see what this is going to look like when it's rendered. We're gonna bring that down, but now we've got our kind of metal material in here. And then for our door, we might add a wood material. So we'll just pick a wood material from our library. Sure, this one should be great. And so I'm just gonna hop over into my texture size settings right here and we're just going to adjust this maybe we'll turn it so the grain is going kind of up and down like this and honestly with this being an exterior door it might be more of a metal door but that's okay um, but then we can go back in like this we can toggle all our parts and pieces on and you can see how we've applied materials to basically this whole thing and you might pick these up and put them on like a metal material or something like that um, in this case you might use a library material, so import, metal. And I maybe don't want something quite so reflective, maybe like a matte bronze or something like that. But now we've gone through and we've applied materials to our whole model. And you can kind of jump over into either rendered mode in order to see what those materials would look like more rendered with light, or you could also toggle into ray traced mode, which is actually going to do like a ray traced realistic rendering of your object. And that's something we can talk about a little bit more in the future. We don't need to get way into that right now, but you can use this in order to really quickly add and also see the materials inside of your models. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. I will link to my guide where I get more in depth on materials on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.